All right, so this is going to be a short video, a little micro lesson, but it's something that you can take away and start applying to your playing right away. This is something I went over with my son last night, and uh, he's learning to play guitar, and he was able to start using it right away, and it really enhanced his playing, and I think it will for you too. So what we were doing is we were playing, uh, we were just doing a little jam last night, and I was playing a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord, just kind of looping through a 1-4-5 progression. I asked him to improvise on top of that, and he was able to do it a little bit. Actually, I'm going to put on a jam track with those same three chords so that I can demonstrate everything I'm going to talk you through. All right, so I started playing these chords. There's a G chord, there's a C, there's a G for the one, and then there's a D for the five chord. Just repeating that G, C, and D, basic, you know, generic sounding thing and I asked uh, my son Ben I said all right now improvise something on top of this now he's been used to playing some kind of bluesy stuff uh, this has got more of a country vibe and he is but he ended up doing the minor pentatonic thing he did something like this went right into G minor pentatonic scale which there's nothing wrong with I mean that that does work his phrasing wasn't bad he was playing little phrases stopping, stopping on the right note a lot of times. He would come up into little bends like that. But uh, I said, well, why don't you play some major pentatonic scale stuff just to sort of, you know, counter that a little bit. And he, so he did. He went something like this. Obviously, I'm paraphrasing. You know, I don't remember what he did, but it was, you know, it was good. It was it sounded like major pentatonic scale. So then I asked him to blend the two, which he kind of did, although it was in, it, it wasn't seamless. But he would go for one, and then he'd go. You know, so that may sound familiar to some of you uh, to be in that place of, you know, you you know a little bit about your major and minor pentatonic scale, but it still kind of sounds bland. It doesn't sound like you're really hitting the right notes all the time or are, are playing very melodic. So this is what we worked on and this made a huge difference in just a few minutes and I'm hoping it does for you too. Uh, we started with playing our G chord using the E shape from the cage system. Just playing that bar chord. Now these three fingers are making up the E uh, are making up that E shape. That's where that comes from. So I said you don't need to play the entire chord because uh, he was struggling with bar chord, he still kind of has a hard time with that. But he could play this. He could play this little triad, the top part of that chord, like this. Right? So you bar these two uh, strings on the third fret, strings one and two, and then play the fourth fret third string. And you're playing a G chord. This is your G note, by the way, that note name on your first string. So you got your G, then if you come all the way up here, there's your D, and then there's your G. So now we go through the chords using this triad, like this just slid into them too. There's my C, there's my G, and then there's my D. So you have your one, and then your four. This is the eighth fret, that's my C note. And so we did that for a while, um, and then we split that triad into two parts. So you have, there's three strings in your triad, so you could take that into two parts and you can play strings two and three at the same time or you can play strings one and two at the same time so you can do this kind of thing so here's two and three just that little harmony I can do it for each of these chord shapes by the way right now we can go into strings one and two which is easier this is a, you know one little bar there and then you can start putting them together Right? That kind of thing. Started to sound a little more melodic. Now it's not great yet, but we're getting somewhere. So let's make this more efficient. So it's not efficient jumping from here all the way up to here. Let me talk about how to do that. So jumping from this G all the way up here to my C, and then all the way up here to my D, it might, so it might sound okay, but it's not very efficient. We want to move my C and my D down here so we're all in the same neighborhood. That way it's just a tight, concise little neighborhood that we're working within, and you're able to, to get to the notes a lot quicker and a lot easier and be more accurate. So 
that's my G. For the C, I ask myself, where's my nearest C to where I'm at? Where's my nearest C triad? We're gonna stay with this triad theme for now. Well, I've got a C chord right here using that A shape, caged, and if I look at the top three strings of that, it looks like this. So I've got my G, and then I've got my C. Right, now I can always take that and go up two frets and play my D that way, or, uh, you know, just keeping with the concise theme, you know, where's a closer D? There's actually one here. I'm, I'm limiting myself to the, those top three strings, but that's the D that we all know, right? That first sort of chord, one of our first chords we learned. So we have our G, C, D, and it's right here all together. So you have... So you can slide in. This time I'm sliding in. It's the same thing is doing it up here, but I'm doing it down here now. Now I'm sliding in on just strings one and two out of that triad, like that. So that can represent my four chord. There's my one chord and then my four chord. I've got the D here. I've also got a D7, which is even sounds better, and it's right here. Now that's like taking your C chord and then moving it up two frets, and then putting your pinky down on the fifth fret, third string, and playing it like that. So you've got one, four, five, and you can break this into pieces. Strings two and three, strings three and four, or strings four and two to get that harmonized six. There's all kinds of things you can do if you start breaking these triads down into smaller fragments like that. So. Uh, the last little point on this I want to make is going, uh, take, like when we go to our one chord and we go to our G, you can go. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing my triad, my G triad, and then I'm coming up to my C just for a moment and then going back to my G. And this is something I talk about quite a bit. It's, I call it a gospel change. To me, it's something I hear gospel piano players doing. You play the one chord and then you play whatever chord you're on. Actually, forget me saying the one chord. Whatever chord you're playing in a song, you can go to that chord's four chord. So G chord, its four chord is a C. So I'm just playing strings two and three out of the, the C chord using the A shape. So now I've got, and then I've got this, right? So let's go to my f four chord, C. Now its four chord would be an F, right? A, the, the four chord of, of a C is an F, so you can go, right? Now that's my D shape right there. Now I don't need to play all of that. Here's how I do it, and you, you can just memorize this little pattern here. You can play uh, that strings one and two like we talked about, and then lift my index finger, and now I've got my middle and ring finger up here. Just playing strings one and two. Ring fingers on the sixth fret second string, middle fingers on the fifth fret first string. So you have for your four chord, then back to your one chord. And then let's go to the five chord and go like this. And, and I'm just playing that D7 chord that I just showed you. I'm playing strings four and two at the same time. Then the third string. And then back to four and two. That's one way you could do it. You could come down and play your D7 like this. Right? So you've got options. Now one other thing I want to attach to this is each of these triads, you can play their seventh chord, and that's where it starts to sound very bluesy, and it starts to tie that pentatonic scale stuff back into this. So, here's my G, right? Strings two and three, strings one and two, which we've talked about. There's my the four chord of that chord. But then you've got this. If we were on strings one and two, watch this. Oh, see, that's cool. That's, that's the blues. So that's... 6th fret 2nd string. Now that's one of your notes from your minor pentatonic, right? But I'm just, when I'm playing that, it's also a note, it's your flat 7 from like your G7 chord. Right? That's that note. So, if you think about where that note is in relation to this triad... Now again, we're just on strings 1, 2, and 3, so we're not all over the fretboard, but now I can go...
right? I'm starting to play some real cool harmonies and stuff out of this chord shape. Now let's go to the C chord in this neighborhood. Look at that. So for this, we have this, the top part of our A shape, and then we have this. Think of your A7 chord down in first position. If you, if you play it up here where you bar the first three strings on the fifth fret, and then you do sixth fret first string, you've got a C7. There's your flat seven. So now you can go and hit that flat seven for your four chord. So now you've got your one, four, back to your one. And then for your five chord, there's your seven, which we already talked about. Or down here, right? Or you could come up here and go. Same thing as the C, you just up two frets. You've got all these options, but it's all in the same little area here. Now the magic happens when you take this idea of what we just played over these chord shapes, and you take those pentatonic scales, the major, the minor, and you weave it all together. So I'm gonna go back to the jam track and start doing that now to weave that all together into one cohesive solo. Thank mm -hmm. you. 